All right. <coughs> Hello, everyone. Here is another viewer question answered. Um, I have here an applique leaf, and this has been digitized by someone else. And um, I'm going. I've left the grid on to show you how small the leaf is. So you can see here that this is only one centimeter. So if we look down here at the size, it's only 37.6 millimeters um, wide and 85.7 millimeters high, which is quite small. If I go one to one you'll see what I mean. The other feature about this leaf is that it has quite sharp angles. So what has happened is this has been an applique digitized. There's no fabric in there at the moment. Um, and the um, sharp angles in the, in the applique process have resulted in the blanket stitch that was used as the cover stitch in distorting. Let's go back to show all. Um, and so you've got these sharp angles and rather long stitches at the points, um, which doesn't look all that attractive, whereas you've got your regular blanket stitch running around here. Now, there are two ways around this. Now, what I'm going to do is just hide my hoop and grid so that everything's a little bit clearer. There are two ways to get around this. The first way is to not use blanket stitch as a cover stitch, to change the cover stitch to a satin stitch um, and that will give you a nice neat coverage but that might not be the way you want to go. The other way is to manually edit these stitches to get yourself a better looking blanket stitch in the corners. So if you really want blanket stitch you're going to have to go to this little bit of extra effort. Now before you can do anything with an applique design is because it's applique if I try to select one of the colours over here you'll see everything selects. There's no locked or grouped symbols on these blocks. Um, it's not locked or grouped, but it is um, an applique, so it acts as one um, embroidery, which is a little bit um, difficult to work with. So what I'm going to do is come across here to the Break Apart tool, which is available, and left click on that. And now I can select individually. And the reason I want to do that is because I want to um, view by colors. So if we come up here, view by colour, and you can see I've got both colours showing here now. Now I can select the um, the applique colour, the green, and go OK. And that will temporarily hide the pink out of the way, which gives me a much better view of what I'm doing. Now this part of the blanket stitch here is OK. So I'm going to zoom into this area here where it's not very nice and show you what you can do. So let's take our zoom tool and zoom in. OK. Now we have a, an edit function in our software and to access it you need to press the letter E for elephant on your keyboard. And once you've done that, you won't see anything happen, but you can then click on individual stitches. So I can left click on that stitch or that stitch, and I can move through the stitches stitch by stitch with my arrow keys. So just pushing the right arrow key will move one stitch on, and pr pressing the left arrow key will move one stitch at a time backwards. Okay, and you can see how the blanket stitch is formed there. Um, easily too. The forward, the up arrow will actually take you 10 stitches forward, so if I click on that, oh sorry, backwards if I use the up arrow, and if I use the forward, the down arrow, I will go 10 stitches forward. Okay, so if you need to move through a design quickly, this function is really good if you want to check the stitch out and your slow redraw is too slow or too fast for you. You can actually go through the whole design stitch by stitch if you want to, to check that everything is okay. But you can also now use it to actually move stitches, individual stitches. Now you'll notice each stitch has a white dot here. That's because in my view, I've also selected needle points. And that's ticked. So if you have that ticked, they'll show. If you deselect it, they'll disappear. Okay, so we'll go view needle points.
and they're back again and my cross is still here for my editing so the first thing I'm going to do is shorten this long stitch here so I'm going to go th forward till I get to that point on the design with my arrow key there I am and I'm going to use my mouse and left click over the cross and drag that stitch back to where I want now sometimes you'll actually see it move and other times you won't see anything but just move your mouse to the position you want it and left go your left um, let go your left mouse key when you're in the position you want and then press enter and you'll see it'll jump back to a shorter stitch or to the position where you selected. Now I've got that shorter I can move this stitch here so I can either just click on it with my left mouse key or I could have used my arrow keys to get back to it but I've left clicked on it now I'm going to left click and drag to the position I want and I want it to come out I haven't let go of my left mouse key, I'm going to keep that down until I get in the position, but I'm just showing you that I want it to come out um, at a 90 degree angle from the um, actual stitching line. So I'm going to click, release my mouse key about there, and then press enter. And the stitches jump. Now I'm not quite straight, so I can always just move it slightly again release my mouse and press enter and I like the look of that position that leaves this one here crooked so I can straighten that one up too by left mouse click, clicking and line it up and I want to sort of scale it down a little bit so um, the one above here is a bit shorter and I want to be getting shorter because I'm going to be bringing this stitch across here as well so I want to go just a little bit shorter than these ones here but so the eye sees it going into a point and probably about there. Let go and press enter. Whoops, I didn't quite get that. There we go. Back a bit. Don't quite like the look of that. That's about nice there. Now this one over here, I'm going to bring right up to here and about there. Let go and press enter. And you can see already that I'm making this much more attractive by moving these stitches and if you're not happy you can just move them again okay now I've got a really big gap here so I want to actually add a stitch to make it more even like these ones here remembering this is a small design so even though this gap here is a little bit bigger it may look okay or I could m fractionally move this one up to about here which I might do first actually so what I need to do is zoom in even further because there's two stitches on top of each other here so I'm just going to zoom in even further okay and I'm going to left click on here and I want to move that one now this time you can actually see it happening you see move that one up there and release and press enter okay and now I need to move this one on top of it and release and press enter so that it actually moves now if I zoom back out again um, show all and I'll just zoom in to here okay um, I want to just move this fractionally up this one now because I moved the other parts of it up there and press enter that's better now if I go to show all you can see that already this corner looks much neater but I still want I think I need another stitch in here so let's zoom back in there now while I'm in the edit mode I can actually add stitches as well but what you need to do is move your cross to the stitch before where you want to add the stitch so let's just go through with our forward arrow key, our right facing arrow key to the point where we want to add the stitch so we're going up and around the point we're up here now and we're going to go to here here back to here okay now you can see that this line here has gone pink and this line here in the direction of where the next stitch will be has is pink also so now if I right click where I want my new stitch the cross will jump and a new stitch has been created okay now I need to create the stitch that is going to come out here 
I can't create it just out in mid-air. I need to create it um, on the line between where the, old, the last stitch was and the next stitch is going to be. So I'm going to right click anywhere along here because I'm actually going to move it. Okay, now I've created another stitch. I can left click and drag that to where I want it to go. About there. Press my Enter key. And now I'll need another stitch on this line to bring back to here to form the blanket stitch. So I'm right clicking on the line between the cross and the following stitch. And that will give me a new stitch which I can then left click and drag to where I want it and press enter. Okay, now I've created that extra stitch. I'll probably just move this one by left clicking on it and just move it ever so slightly this direction. And press enter. That looks fine to me. And let's go to show all. And I'll just back through the stitches to get that cross out of the way so we can actually see. If you hold your arrow keys down by the way it will run through the stitches. I hope you can see that happening. You just hold your arrow key down and it will run through the stitches. Now that's looking much neater here. I probably want to bring this one round this way just a, a little bit more. Probably in the line of this line coming down here and press enter. Yep, that looks pretty good. I might even need another stitch going out here. I could move um, some of these. Let's zoom in and do that. Um, so I'll zoom in. So the stitching, let's go back a few stitches. The stitching is going to come, let me put my arrow here so you can see the cross moving, forward here then forward here, then back here, and then it's going to go along there, but I would actually probably like another one coming out here. This is all personal interpretation, so um, I'm going to add those stitches in, so enter, and right click on here again to add another stitch and bring that back to there, enter, and so now I've got this little V um, happening here, which I think, I'm just going to move this one a little bit longer. Enter. Looks nicer. And then I can fiddle around straightening these up. So it's just a matter, as I said, of personal interpretation of how you want these to look. and you need to really to understand how they're going to look you really need to um, let's just go out to show all look at at least the show all or even the one to one to make sure that they're balanced and even but I think you'll agree that this if I just insert the design again so you can compare so we'll go file insert and I've saved this design here open so that it comes in and of course it's landed right on top of the other one so I'm just going to while it's all selected drag it over to the side here okay so you can see this part here compared to this whoops <laughs> compared to this we've got a much nicer looking um, blanket stitch around there so it's worth the effort I would go on and I'd probably even delete um, in fact I should show you how to delete stitches as well because I didn't show you that yet so I'm just going to delete this copy out of the way so we don't have any confusion here and we'll zoom in here again I think I've probably got one too many blanket stitches here because of the way I've moved them so I'm going to take one out and move the other one a little bit closer s to see how that looks. So while I've got my cross on a stitch I can in fact just delete it. Um, let me see, perhaps I moved 
I have to press my edit key. Sometimes when you take another action, like I have then inserted a design, my edit function has stopped working. So if I click on here, it's actually selecting the design. It's not selecting that stitch. Can you see that everything's gone pink and the whole design is selected here? So don't panic. Just click off the design so it's deselected and press your letter E again to reconnect the edit function and then select the stitch that's better and press delete and that stitch is gone but also remember there were two stitches here so I want to take one of those out as well so I'll press delete again ah no now I've got a jump stitch here let's just undo that okay um, let's zoom in and see what's going on here Okay, so I'm going to select that stitch and drag it out. And what have I got? It press enter. Ah, there is only one stitch there, but the distance from here to here must be too long. So let's just leave that stitch there for a minute. Um, and let's move these two, just a fraction this way. Enter. And this one. Enter. Okay, and let's move this one across enter and now let's see if we can delete that one without creating a jump stitch no it's still created a jump stitch and tie in and tie off undo that so perhaps we could move that stitch I just didn't want a stitch in the middle here enter so it's got a tiny little stitch there. So you'll see this is one long stitch, which is will blend in with the rest. And this one here, let's just bring that back this way a bit. Enter. Okay, let's have a look at that at show all scale. And let's just move our arrow out of the our cross out of the way. You can see this is already starting to look quite balanced and nice. So just continue on around. Um, so if you have uh, any design with very sharp angles and you get this ugly looking um, effect with your blanket stitch, you can actually make it look quite attractive. Of course, test sew it as well before you actually put it in your project because to make sure that these point um, points are going to get held down nicely with the shorter stitches. I'm sure because I've got these stitches here that everything will be fine. Um, but, you know, as I said, test so. So I hope you like that. There's some cross stitch stuff coming up soon in my, um, I'm halfway through organising a whole a range of cross stitch videos and I have a cut work um, project in mind as well for those of you with the Cutwork software. So if you're not subscribed, press that subscribe button so you don't miss any of these. I am trying to blog on my website as well about the videos I make, but I've been extremely busy and so um, I'm a bit behind with that. So that's my next job to catch up. Thank you very much.